I'm Dr. Teresa Lyons, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. And this week's Ask Dr. Lyons question is, does your child with autism need inulin? First question, what is inulin? Inulin is a saccharide and is a prebiotic. You might be thinking, what is a prebiotic? And prebiotics are dietary fibers that are selectively fermented by microbes such as bifidobacteria and lactobacilli. So inulin is going to work in your child's gut initially. You can find inulin naturally in foods such as artichokes, asparagus, and garlic. And there are certainly other foods that also contain inulin, just not as high levels. Prebiotics are not bacteria. So you can think of prebiotics as food for the gut microbiota. So if you ever hear of someone taking prebiotics, they're basically feeding their gut microbiota. Prebiotics are not bacteria. Probiotics are bacteria. Prebiotics are what's going to feed your gut microbiota. So what do prebiotics do? In general, consuming prebiotics will increase the number of bifidobacteria and lactobacilli, displace other neutral or pathogenic organisms, alters metabolism and activity of the gut microbiota, and often lowers the pH of the colon. Let me just paint a picture of what happens when you ingest prebiotics, whether it's in the supplement form or whether it's in food. So the prebiotics are going to feed bifidobacteria and lactobacilli, specifically and mainly in the large intestine. Now, when you feed bacteria, that means they can grow, they can proliferate. So naturally, when you feed bifidobacteria and lactobacilli, that population is going to grow. So you'll displace other things in the gut. And when you do that, that's when metabolism chains and the activity of the gut changes as well. And in the end, you can also see a lowering of the pH of the colon. Now, when all this happens, you can also have increase in the concentration of, of short chain fatty acids, such as butyrate, acetate, and propionate. Butyrate and propionate have roles in autism. So this is kind of how autism circles back to the topic of inulin. Let's look a little bit at prebiotics in distant sites. So I'm talking a lot about what's happening in the gut. And the thing is that the effects of inulin are not restricted just to your child's gut. So yes, inulin has been widely used to improve GI issues. However, prebiotics such as inulin can also exert effects elsewhere in the body. And there's many different places in the body that inulin can exert an effect on. First one is bone strength, then neural and cognitive processes, specifically memory, attention, learning, mood, and anxiety. All very important for those with autism. Inulin can also exert an effect on immune functioning, the skin, and serum lipid profile, so cardiovascular aspects. The mode of action is influenced by intestinal permeability and by the actual fermentation products reaching target cells throughout the body. Inulin is ingested by you or your child and then the bacteria start eating it, specifically bifidobacteria and lactobacilli, and then you can have widespread effects throughout your body. Butyrate and other short chain fatty acids are considered to be the actual enactors of these distant beneficial effects in the body. So these short chain fatty acids are produced in your large intestines and for them to exert effects elsewhere in the body, they have to travel there. So I'm just going to dive into prebiotics and bones just briefly. Many parents of those with autism put their child on a dairy free diet and see great changes in symptoms. But then many of those parents are also concerned if their child is getting enough calcium. Research in 2016 found that short chain fatty acids modulate nutrient absorption and intestinal permeability. So now scientists are exploring the possibility of using prebiotics to increase calcium and magnesium absorption in the large intestines. The whole goal is increasing bone regeneration and preventing 
osteoporosis. So obviously this is important for a child who's growing. Yes, they need nutrients to grow, to form bone. And when you restrict dairy, many parents are concerned if by restricting a food group, if their child will be deficient in a particular nutrient. Dairy actually isn't the best way to get calcium, but the concern is there. You wanna make sure your child is getting as much nutrients as possible. And prebiotics is actually a way for children to get more nutrients from the food that they're eating. So I'll go over some clinical research about this. So specifically in 2005, inulin type fructin was studied in teenagers and the results were calcium and bone density improved when these children were given inulin type fructin. In 2002, there was a mixture of inulin and oligofructose that was studied in adolescent girls and results were that calcium absorption improved. So again, they're giving inulin and, or an inulin oligofructose mixture and they're studying what happens throughout the body. And what they found was that calcium absorption improved. And the third study was in 1999. Oligofructose was studied in adolescent boys and the results were that calcium absorption was improved. So you can see how just by giving a prebiotic, you can influence bone health and bone formation and mineral uptake. The gut is really important in overall health. So let's relate everything back to autism because that's probably why you're listening to me. So inulin and autism. There are no human clinical trials studying inulin in the autism population. And you might be thinking, Wait, why do doctors recommend inulin for someone with autism? Besides all those general beneficial facts that I just mentioned. So bifidobacteria and autism. It's well known that the gut microbiota for those with autism are significantly different than those without autism. And bifidobacteria happens to be much lower in amount in someone with autism than in someone without autism. So I'll go into a little bit about bifidobacteria. Bifidobacteria, they contribute protection against pathogens, production of vitamin B, antioxidants, conjugated linoleic acid, and they stimulate the immune system. The numbers of bifidobacteria for everyone are the highest at birth and decline through life. Bifidobacteria amount in those with autism have been found to be decreased in comparison to individuals without autism. So these are the reasons why a doctor might have recommended your child taking inulin. There are different protocols. There's something called the NAMCHEC protocol that heavily uses inulin. This is the scientific logic behind why a healthcare practitioner might recommend that you give your child inulin. The decision is up to you. There's no clinical trial information studied on inulin with autism, but that doesn't mean it's not beneficial. These are the facts, and here's some references in case you wanna read the publications yourself.